I get lots of questions about my meal planning process and my grocery hauls. So in this video, I'm going to take you along and let you see how it happens. Let's get it started. This video is brought to you by Apron Diva. Pretty and practical, we believe that an apron can be a homemaker's best accessory. Visit us at www.aprondiva.com. So the first thing I'll do is to shop my shelves. That means I'll check my fridge, my freezer, my pantry, my extended pantry, which includes my new air freezer that I keep in the garage. Ooh. I obviously have not been checking these potatoes. Oh my goodness. Some of those potatoes were so nasty, I didn't even want to touch them with my hands. That's why I put gloves on. And then the ones that I'm keeping, I'm going to wash up. And I will use those today or tomorrow. I've got a bin that I keep my onions in. And these are all fine. Particularly because I bought them most recently. Next, I'm going to check my fridge. And I'm going to see what needs to be tossed and what needs to be used up. I've got quite a few leftovers in here, so I'll look through those to see what's what. Ew! Cilantro that's seen better days. This salad is fine. But this spinach is starting to wilt on the bottom, so spinach will definitely be on the list this week. Here's a home chef meal that I need to prepare within the next day or so. So that will be going on the list. These tomatoes have been in here for about a week, so they definitely need to get used. Carrots are fine, but I know I'm going to need more. I forgot I had this lunch meat in here, so either I'll have to use that or get it in the freezer. Celery is fine, onions that need to be used, and some cheese that hasn't been opened, so that's good to go. Apples are fine, lemons in the back, oranges over there, and limes that look like they're a little worse for wear. Next, I'll check my freezer. I'll see what's in my fridge-freezer combination, and then I'll check my new air chest freezer. Now that I've checked my fridge, my freezer, and my pantry in the kitchen, and my produce section, I now know what I need to look for in here. I'm always going to have some kind of a taco or Mexican themed dish on Tuesday for Taco Tuesday. So I'll see what's in here for that. Every now and then I'll mix it up and maybe we'll have some kind of a chili type thing. Particularly on Fridays I like to do chili or, or something like that. So looking here at my shelf you can see that I've definitely got some holes. But I do have my garbanzo beans and my black beans which I use often when I make my tacos and then do I have taco shells which I do have taco shells so I'll be taking these things out of here and putting them into the pantry in my kitchen. The other thing I'll do while I'm in here is check my expiration dates and oh with that being said remembering that since this is part of my extended pantry, my prepper pantry, so to speak, I want to make sure that I am rotating my things out. So the first thing in should be coming out now because it is January and we want to start using those things on our shelves. Now, we've been saving things up for those rainy days, but we don't want to save them to the point that they expire or that they're no longer usable. So I'll be checking some dates while I'm in here and I'll be checking 
like my chicken broth. I've been using my own chicken broth for a while. So I want to make sure the dates on this purchased chicken broth is okay. This is August of 2023. So these look like I bought them all at about the same time. So they're August of 2023. So those dates are good. However, I know I've had this beef broth for a while. So I better check the date on it. And it's September 2022, so I need to be getting this used. So I'll be taking this off the shelf and putting it in that pantry. One of the other things that I know that I do want to make this week is chicken salad. And I want to get a couple cans of these smaller cans of boneless white chicken breast out. And I know that their best buy date is coming up. This one is best by November 2023 as is this one. So I'm going to put these in the kitchen pantry so that I can get those used up. And as I look at my shelf and I see some holes, and you can see some of the holes as well, because I've been using from this shelf, I need to fill some things in. So one of the things I'll do, I do have some canned goods stored in other places. I'll bring those out and fill in the gaps here so that I know when I do go shopping to add to my prepper pantry or my extended pantry, I know what I need to pick up. One of the things that I see is this is all the honey that I've got left. And as Granny Karma says, two is one and one is none. So when this bottle is empty, I won't have any more. So honey will go on the list for me to pick up. And then down here, I've got some jars of tomato that I put up. And I also need to start using up some of those. So we'll definitely have some pasta coming up this week. These sweet peas are marked for expiration or best by date, I should say, as 12:23. So they're going to go right up here. These petite red goat tomatoes, the best by date is August 2022. So these are going to go in the kitchen. And these carrots, the use by date is December 2021. So I definitely need to start opening some of these cans. Now that I know what I need to use up and what I've got available, I'll put together some menu ideas and then I'll put them on my list for the week. And here's the thing, typically when you're building a menu for a day and even for a week, you're gonna build that around a protein source a carbohydrate or starch source, some fruits and vegetables. So that might be, we'll say, chicken as your protein source, maybe mashed potatoes and gravy as your starch, and then maybe green beans or uh, spinach or kale as your vegetable. If you don't eat meat and you want to have some kind of a plant-based option, then your protein source might be some kind of bean. And so you might build your meal around a bean and rice bowl, such as maybe either brown rice or white rice as the base. And then you'll have maybe black beans or pinto beans or some other beans like that as your primary protein source. And you might put some other things with that and serve that on top of the rice. Now that I've got my list made, I'll get ready to start dinner. The first thing I'll do is empty those containers and then give them a good washing and then I'll get started on the mashed potatoes. I'm going to make a chicken mashed potatoes and spinach dinner for today. That way I can use up those potatoes quickly.
And since it's taken a bit more time than I plan, I'll get groceries tomorrow. So now that we've talked about how I shop my shelves, meaning my fridge, my freezer, my pantry, and my extended pantry, I want to show you the groceries that I picked up. And this is mostly produce and then one non-dairy item and a few canned goods and that kind of thing. But since I really didn't need to purchase any meats or any other dairy products, this is what I have. And one of the things that I've been wanting to use quite a bit lately are red and yellow peppers. So I have these sweet red and yellow peppers that taste delicious when they're roasted. And these will be one of the side dishes that I'll have, maybe with some potatoes or something like that. But these roasted um, sweet red and yellow peppers. And then these red and yellow peppers and orange peppers will be cut up and placed in things like a topping for either stir fry or for tacos or with rice and things like that. So that's those. And then of course, I was always running out of onions, so I picked up a bag of these yellow onions. I used them quite a bit. And I will say, the yellow onions were a little bit cheaper than the white ones, so I got the yellow. Two heads of garlic. I've been using a lot of garlic lately and the more I saute or roast vegetables, I find I'm using a lot more garlic. So got the garlic. This broccoli was on sale. I'm sorry. These Brussels sprouts were on sale. I guess they're starting to show a little bit of worse for wear. So I'll have these within the next couple of days or two. And they're perfect to have as a side dish. You can either roast them in a little olive oil and uh, serve them with that way. You can crinkle up some bacon and have the roasted, the fried bacon bits and all that in the Brussels sprouts. Or just roast them with a little olive oil, put a little salt and pepper on them. And then you can serve them as a side dish with chicken, with pork, 
with beef, with whatever you like. So that's one of the things that we're going to have is roasted Brussels sprouts. And then I made a cabbage soup the other day that was absolutely amazing. And I want to make another. So I bought a small head of cabbage to do that with. And then I was watching a video and a lady made the most delicious looking cauliflower. And I hadn't purchased cauliflowers, particularly like one like this in a while. So I did get one today and the cauliflower was $3.49. I was like, my goodness. Now the cabbage was 89 cents a pound, which is still up a little bit because of course it is not in season, but it was worth buying. The cauliflower was $3.49 and then I bought a head of iceberg lettuce. I've got some uh, other lettuce in the fridge that I had gotten last week. It's like the deep colored lettuce and you can buy the four different heads of lettuce in a container. And I like to chop all of those up together and have a chopped salad with that. So I've got lettuce for that. And then... Um, I wanted to make some green beans. I wanted some fresh green beans and they'll be perfect as a side dish with either green beans with a little bit of bacon in them and serve those alongside some rice and chicken. So, got some fresh green beans. And then, um, my husband loves cherries and he likes a lot of fruit and so I'm trying to wean him away from all the chips that I normally buy. So I didn't buy any chips this week, but I did buy cherries. And these cher cherries were like almost $6 for this small bag. Strawberries at Kroger were two for $5, so I just got one. I'm starting to make my smoothies in the morning again. And then these red grapes, oh my goodness, $7 for this package of grapes. And just as a quick reminder, when you get your grapes, you don't just go ahead and wash the whole bunch because then you get them all wet and they get kind of molded and around the where the um, where the vines insert into the grape. So what you want to do is just. What you want to do is to wash the part that you're going to eat. Like if you're going to take out a bunch of grapes, wash that bunch, put them in a bowl, in a dish or whatever, but don't wash the rest of the ones. Otherwise, they can mold quickly around the edges. So there's that. And bananas, of course. We always need bananas. Bananas for smoothies. Bananas for just eating. And I saw a recipe where a lady had like sauteed the bananas to kind of bring out the sweetness in them, to caramelize them, and then put them on top of her oatmeal and use the bananas as a sweetener. So I'm going to try that because we talked about this last week on Leona's show, Lunchtime with Leona, and we talked about my addiction to sugar. So I'm trying to kick that habit. So I'm going to try to go more with the natural sweetness route. This package of apples was almost $5. And then the other apples in the store, they had Fuji and Granny Smith and all of those. Those apples were like $4.99 for a two pound bag. This was at least $4.99 for a three pound bag. So these are, those are the apples that I got. And then my husband likes roasted nuts. And so I got these deluxe roasted nuts. I couldn't find any that weren't salted. And these nuts were like $7.50. And then we're going to have this melon for breakfast in the morning, along with our oatmeal. And then I also picked up some mushrooms. Going to make some mushrooms, uh, kind of stir fry those with some veggies, that kind of thing. So we'll have that. And I saw a recipe with some roasted corn. And I just thought, I have got to try that. What she did was she kind of slathered the corn with a little oil and then she sauteed it in a skillet with like grill marks on it and the corn came out looking amazing. Make you think of that Mexican street corn that you might see at vendor fairs and different things like that. So I'm going to make some of that. And 
as you know, I use carrots a lot. I put carrots in so many things. I got this big bag of carrots. Got some green onions, also known as spring onions. Those are good for making lots of different things. And then, of course, I got some kale. I've used up most of the kale that I grew. And then I also wanted some fresh for chopped salads. The kale that I might still have is in the freezer, so I wanted to get some fresh for chopped salads and also for smoothies. And then sweet potatoes. They had sweet potatoes, yellow ones, but they also had these red sweet potatoes, and I thought I would try those. Now, here's the thing. The regular sweet potatoes were 99 cents a pound. These red sweet potatoes were $1.99 a pound, and so these three potatoes were like $5. But I wanted to give them a try, and they're a pretty healthy option, so I went ahead and got them. So there's that. So let me move some of these things out of the way, and then I'll show you what I've got back there. So here are these things. First of all, I got some coconut milk for the first time. And I had heard that it's really good to cook with, that it's nutrition, and you can use it in smoothies and so many other things. So I picked up this small carton of coconut milk, and it is the no sugar added. And we'll see how I like it. And then I also picked up a carton of silk almond milk. My husband likes the almond milk. We use it all the time. Um, and I like it as well, but typically I like the vanilla um, and the, um, the original with the vanilla and it's got added sugar. Well, this time I got the unsweetened vanilla. So there's no added sugar. You can still use it for cereal and cooking and baking and things like that. But it's just a little bit less sweet, so we'll see how I do with that. And then I needed some more olive oil. We have been out of olive oil for a while, so we've been using my avocado oil for just about all of the cooking. Or if he was frying fish, we've got some peanut oil or corn oil that he was using. So I picked up some olive oil. But I tell you what, this bottle of olive oil was almost $14. I was just like, whoa! But there you have it. So that's the size I got. I picked up two cartons of vegetable broth because sometimes, depending upon who's here, and I'm making beans or greens or something like that, I don't want to use the chicken broth. So I got some vegetable broth. And I'm going to make some of my own vegetable broth too in a couple of days. And I'll bring you along when I do that. But I always get Swanson when I can. So I got two cartons of Swanson vegetable broth. There's none on my shelf, and most of the, the um, broth that's on my shelf right now is chicken broth, and there might be one carton of beef broth, but I have been using those items up. And then I did get a few cans of beans. So we've been using quite a few black beans lately for chili, for in, uh, not enchiladas, but tacos. So, because you know, every Tuesday is Taco Tuesday, and I typically will put black beans and corn, some kind of a mixture like that, on my tacos. And if we're not doing tacos, we might do a taco bowl or some kind of a rice bowl with a Mexican flair. So I did go ahead and grab two cans of black beans just because I've been using so many. And they had them um, 10 for 10 at Kroger, so I only got two of those. This is with the bushes for 10 for 10. And then I picked up three cans of garbanzo beans. Now, I still got quite a few cans of garbanzo beans on my shelf, but I want to try and make my own hummus. So I picked up three cans today specifically for that purpose. And then uh, the last couple times I had a recipe that called for kidney beans. I didn't have any. I will typically have chili beans, but I think I even used the last of those the last time I made chili. And as Granny Karma says, two is one and one is none. So I picked up two cans of these kidney beans so that if I had to use one, I'd have one left. And then the next time I go to the grocery, I'll pick up a couple more. The other thing was I needed some cannellini beans for a recipe oh, a month or so ago. Didn't have any. So I picked up two cans of cannellini beans today. Again, two is one and one is none. So I picked up two cans of that. And like I said, I'm trying to cut back on the chips and those kind of salty snacks that I get from my husband. 
So I picked up a package of raw almonds. He does like those. And he will mix them with some other mixed nuts. Like those uh, sea salt mixed nuts that I showed you earlier. He'll mix some of those in with that. And kind of brush some of the salt off. And then we use pecans on our oatmeal. And I use it for a lot of other things as well. Especially like pecans on a salad. So I picked up this package of pecans. So these are the things that I picked up for my grocery haul today. Now let me just share a couple of things with you. So let me get these out of the way. Now one of the things that I know people have been talking about is their pantry particularly their extended pantry or their um, prepper pantry and right now there's a lot of pantry challenges going on and they are having these challenges because they are encouraging people to eat from their pantries and I am encouraging you to do the same thing now is the time that you need to be eating from your pantry and I know you're saying Miss Denise I'm saving all these things for a rainy day or for some kind of emergency and I get that but you don't want the food that's in your extended pantry to go bad on the shelf so now you should be rotating those things out and then eating those things that you got in first and the things like for example these that I brought today will go to the back of the shelf and the ones that I've had for a while will come to the front of the shelf. So you do need to start rotating those things out and you should be eating from your pantry. Particularly when you look at the cost of groceries right now, part of the reason why you purchased things was to try to hedge your bets against high grocery prices. Now is the time to, when you see something that's on sale or at a price that you can afford, to go ahead and pick that up but put that at the back of your pantry and use the things on the shelf that you've had there for a while. And in case you're wondering why I don't have any meat in this grocery haul, remember I've been stocking up on meats all along. Now it's time for me to start using some of those meats that I have in my freezer so that they don't go bad and get freezer burn. So I am using those things. So I'm eating from my freezer, my fridge, my pantry, and my extended pantry, which includes my extended freezer. For more grocery hauls and homemaking inspiration, click here.